What makes an image look cinematic? Is it these black bars? The floating aesthetic of a Steadicam? Or is the real secret using a huge 50 grand camera like this one? Well, what if I told you that all you really need is one of these things right here? Don't believe me? Check this out. Did you notice how soft and bloomy those highlights looked in this footage? Well, this is exactly what this lens filter does. This one in particular is called the Dream Effects filter from Prism Lens Effects. And it's essentially a diffusion filter that you screw onto the front of your lens. If you look at the surface of the filter, you'll notice all these little patterns on the glass. And this is exactly how the filter achieves its softening effect. As the light hits this glass, it'll hit these patterns and it'll bend the light rays from their original position, thus resulting in an overall softer image and helping to take some of that digital look looking sharpness away from your footage. Now you might be thinking, why would you take your nice, beautiful, expensive lens like the Sigma right here and put something on the front of it that will actually make the image look even worse? Well, the interesting thing is that throughout the history of cinema, lenses never used to be as sharp as they are today because the quality of the glass that would be on most of the lenses back then, combined with the fact that you'd probably be shooting on film, would generally lead to a softer quality in the image. So over the last decade and even beyond, as digital cameras have become much more prevalent, filmmakers were trying to find ways for them to look a lot closer to that classic film look. And filters continue to be a common way to help bridge this gap. There's a ton of different diffusion specific filters out there and multiple strengths and varieties that you can choose from. And one of the most common is the Black Pro Mist filter, which Tiffin, who are one of the main manufacturers of this filter, state that some of the benefits of using this filter on your project include helping to soften the wrinkles on your actors, creating a soft quality to the lighting that you have, and just generally helping to take some of the edge off modern digital cameras. But these filters can be pretty pricey. Just one strength in an 82 2 millimeter size, which is the same filter size that this lens takes, will cost you around 150 euros. And if you want to get a more universal 4x565 filter size that you can fit in a matte box, then you're looking at forking out 650 euros. Now don't cry, I haven't shattered your dreams of owning one of these filters just yet, because many other filter companies make their own cheaper versions of this one, and in my opinion, they're basically just as good. The subtle dream effects filter that I got from Prism Lens Effects is an example of one of these alternative versions, which for the 82 millimeter size will cost you $75 or approximately 68 euros. So let's look at some comparisons with and without this filter. Comparing these two shots, notice how the highlights bloom behind Henny versus the unfiltered version. You can notice this even more with this image right here, with the way the ATM light is glowing and blooming at the edges of the light source. With this close up, notice the softness in Henny's skin versus how much more you can make up those little details in the unfiltered version. And we can exaggerate this softness even more if we use the non subtle version of the Dream Effects filter. This filter has the same diffusion type as the Subtle Dream FX filter, but it comes at a stronger intensity. You'll notice that here with the slightly wider blooming effect on the street lights in the background. I do find that the full strength version of this filter is actually a bit too intense for most of the things that I shoot. But if you really want to pump up that bloom in the highlights and in the skin, then this is a really handy option that you can use. The really cool thing about these filters is that by using them on modern up-to-date lenses like this one, you can still take advantage of conveniences such as amazing autofocus without having to seek out a vintage manual manual lens just because you really like that soft quality that that particular lens gives off. But before you get too excited about using diffusion filtration on your next project, I recommend that you don't always rely on these filters to help you to get that cinematic look. A super soft and bloomy look might look great for that glossy makeup commercial, but not so much for that upcoming rap artist's really gritty music video project. So instead, think about how the choice of film tools that you have at your disposal can help convey the mood of the particular film project that you're working on. There's many other elements that go into making an image look cinematic. So explore and improve on all of them rather than just relying on one tool. I hope this video got you dropping a few diffusion filters into your kit wish list. If you want to learn about some of the other gear that I own and why it's useful to my workflow, you can check out this other video on my channel right here. Be sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, because if you do, I'll be sure to permanently put black promise filters on my cool looking sunglasses. Maybe. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.